-hmm. Guys, I don't make money off YouTube. Look at Best friends, friends forever, together forever, all kinds of weather. Are we doing this? Ginger. Oh welcome. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to 2018 festive or fake. Is that reading correctly? Left to right? Yeah. What? You remember Catherine and Aaron, they join me every Christmas to play the game that I made up called Festive or Fake, where I give them one thing and they have to decide if it's a real thing, festive, or if I made it up, fake. Ready to play? Yeah. Here are your cards. Oh. This year we're doing the origins of Christmas items. Oh my god. I'm gonna give you Oh my god, that's real trivia. I'm gonna give you the origin of a Christmas thing and you have to decide if it's festive or if it's fake. Okay. Number one, eggnog. Most agree that eggnog originated from the early medieval Britain drink called posset, a hot milky oh. ale-like drink. And by the 13th century, monks were known to drink a posset with eggs and figs. Again, this year, do we have a time like you're gonna count us in? Because I'm not oh, right. playing. <laughs> I'm not playing my cheater. card up before a cheater. Oh, brother. <laughs> I forget every year that he's a cheater, so it's Oh my god, you guys. I think about it every day. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ooh, Aaron says festive. Catherine says fake. It is festive. I'll read you a little extra tidbit of information. You don't need to cheat to get a point, so. <laughs> Rum was called grog and was often served in wooden mugs called noggins. At first, people called the drink egg and grog, and then it changed to eggnog. Why do they call it grog and noggins? <laughs> Number two, figgy pudding. Christmas pudding originated as a 14th century porridge called frumenti that was made of beef and mutton with raisins, currants, prunes, wines, and spices. Oh. This would often be more like a soup and was eaten as a fasting meal in preparation for the Christmas festivities. By Victorian times, the dessert had morphed to include mostly fruit and resembles today's plum pudding. Answers locked in? Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it's festive! Just kidding, I didn't see that on the <laughs> It sounded right, I just went the other way because that's into what I, what I do. <laughs> it's called second guessing and it's a thing that other people do. Oh, yeah. The Yule Log. Okay, it was originally a Nordic tradition. The log represents the hardships of the past year and it is burned on the winter solstice to release your burdens and usher in a fresh start of a new year. They're so in depth that if they're fake, I'm like, how did you even come up with that? <laughs> she <laughs> is very a impressive. creative writer. I think about it, but then I'm like, okay, so there's two festives. There has to be a fake term in there. I can picture every exam he took in high school. <laughs> I'm just like, I haven't had a C. I haven't had a C. <laughs> just mixing it up. <laughs> this isn't aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Three, two, one. Best step. <laughs> that was real slow. <laughs> it is fake. See? I knew it. <laughs> Wait, so I'm losing. This seems like normal now. <laughs> now we're back. To now it's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Number four. Okay. The tradition of Mandarin slash Clementine. Okay. When real life Saint Nicholas, <laughs> a bishop, learned of an impoverished father with no money for his daughter's dowry. St. Nick is said to have dropped sacks of gold into their stockings, which were set up by the fire to dry. Over time, oranges have come to symbolize the sacks of gold and remind people of this act of holiday gift giving. We've got fake, we've got a festive. Oh god. It's festive. Oh, That's yeah. a true story. <laughs> tinsel. Okay. Christmas tinsel. Here's the origin story. There are folk stories about how tinsel was created by the Christmas spider. Oh my god. The story goes that if a spider entered your home before the winter solstice, your house would be blessed with wealth and prosperity for the year to come. The spider would spin webs of silver to mark its presence. This was interpreted as tinsel in modern times. Silver tinsel in modern times. Just silver tinsel. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all right. answer's locked in? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're right, it's fake. I knew However, the Christmas spider is a real thing and the silver Tinsel is a real thing. Originally, tinsel was made of actual pounded silver, and then it was translated to like plastic. Like, so where does the spider come yeah. from? Yeah, it's just a German story. I am a German, and I have never heard it. All hail Krampus. Is that a spider? Yeah, it's a spider. <laughs> Once the spider was on my knee, 
And Aaron still talks about it as a traumatic thing that happened oh, for to him. <laughs> it was the size of a loony. The story of Santa Claus. It is believed that Nicholas St. Nicholas was born sometime around 280 AD in modern day Turkey. Much admired for his piety and kindness, St. Nicholas became the subject of many legends. It is said that he gave away all of his wealth and traveled the countryside helping out the poor and sick. It's festive. You're both correct. Stockings. Yes. Okay. The Christmas stocking custom is derived from the Germanic slash Scandinavian figure Odin. Children would place their booths filled with carrots, straw, or sugar near the chimney for Odin's flying horse, uh, Sleipner, sure. to eat. Sleipner? <laughs> Odin would reward those children for their kindness by replacing Sleipner's food with gifts and candy. Yes. What was the last one? Was it festive or was it fake? I won't tell you. It does sound a little bit real. Festive or fake? Three, two, one! It's festive! Oh, yes. Lumps of coal. Uh, contrary to the balls of gold tradition with mandarin oranges given by St. Nicholas, if a child was bad, they would be given a rotten orange. Oh, I have that type over here. Oh, because you wrote it, so it's <laughs> fake. Okay. Which often looks black <laughs> when covered in mold. Okay. As with I forget about this one. This transition to lumps of coal from the fireplace as the tradition transitioned through Europe and North America. I'm ready. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yes, thank you. Is it because of the spelling mistake? Yep. Yeah. This video is going to just be me behind this. <laughs> or I'll be behind. Put your thing up there. No, people want to see this. <laughs> Candy canes. In the 1600s, a choir master made treats for his choir to keep them quiet during a Christmas church service. He made them into J-shapes like a shepherd's crook to remind them of the shepherds that visited the baby Jesus at the first Christmas. Sometime around the 1900s, the red stripes were added and they were flavored with peppermint or wintergreen. Festive or fake? Three, two, one. It's festive. Boy, oh boy, Aaron. <laughs> Santa got his letter. Santa's reindeer. Rudolph. The original Father Christmas figures were often associated with horse-drawn carriages, but as the stories around the figures grew, the idea of giving gifts to all children around the world became a more commonplace. The stories of horses were replaced with reindeer, and the representation of colder climates like Finland and Iceland, where many Father Christmas stories originated. I feel like I didn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the origin of reindeer is that is it a horse? It started off as horse? horses, and it just transitioned to because raisins of because of the ra cold climate. Raisins. I was like, did you say raisins? <laughs> yeah, like ten minutes ago. Yeah. It's fake. Yes. Next up, mistletoe. By the 18th century, a stealing a stealing a kiss beneath the mistletoe became a common practice among British servants. According to the tradition, it's bad luck to refuse a kiss beneath the mistletoe. After the kiss, the couple is to pluck one of the berries from the plant. Once all the berries are gone, the bow no longer has the power to command kisses. Consent? What's that? Three, two, one! It's festive! Oh, Anytime there's go. something that's even vaguely misogynistic, that's real. <laughs> presents under the tree. My favorite Christmas song is in the presence of presents. <laughs> Did I ever play you the one that we wrote? No, you told me you were doing it, but I don't remember. I'll play them for you guys later. Okay. We have a couple of shitty recordings. The tradition, the tradition of putting gifts under a tree can be traced back to the pres presence of certain mushrooms called Amanita muscaria oh, okay. that live throughout the northern hemisphere. It's pronounced shiitake. <laughs> <laughs> under conifers and birch trees. Mm -hmm. The fungi are deep red with white flecks reminiscent of brightly wrapped gifts. Oh. God. Is festive. What? Is it really? That oh, that's so is dumb. true. So dumb. Next tradition is the angel on the top of the tree. An angel or star might be placed on the top of a tree to represent the angel Gabriel or the star of Bethlehem from the nativity. At first, a figure of baby Jesus was put on top of the tree. Over time, it changed to an angel slash fairy that told the shepherds about Jesus or a star like the wise man saw. This is where the the, the game falls apart because all of the fake answers still sound festive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. That's very true. The story of Krampus. <gasps> Krampus. Evil. The Krampus origins have nothing to do with Christmas, but uh, want, but can be traced back to Norse mythology around the time of other Christmas traditions. <laughs> 
The German word Krampen means horn, which can be associated with reindeer as being associated with Santa Claus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fake. I know lots about Krampus. <laughs> December 25th. At the end of the third century, around 336 AD, church officials decided that December 25th was the day to celebrate the birth of Jesus. This date was likely chosen to coincide with existing pagan festivals honoring Saturn and Mirthra. That way it became- Mirthra! <laughs> Mirthra, it's your festival time. Come here, Mirthra. You're gonna piss off all the pagans, Aaron. Oh anyway, the God. date was chosen to make it easier to convince Roman pagans uh, to accept Christianity as the empire's official religion. Forget about Mirthra. Let me tell you about this oh, guy. Oh, that's where Marth for Christmas came from. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. It's festive, you guys. That is true. Marthra. Marthra. Christmas trees. Where did Christmas trees come from, guys? The tradition became popular when an 1848 newspaper reported that Queen Victoria had a tree set up in Windsor Castle. Castle? Castle. <laughs> By the 20th... What is it? A castle or a castle? By the 20th century, a Christmas tree could be found in most Christian homes in the U.S. and Britain. That's festive. You're both right. Scrooge. What's the origin of Scrooge? The word Scrooge, with an N, was commonly used in Victorian times to describe someone <laughs> who took everything. You know who you sound like? Alex Trebek in that one. Really? You were really Alex Trebek-y. Alex Trebek-y. Trebek <laughs> Alex trebek with the good hand. <laughs> The word Scrooge was commonly used in Victorian times to describe someone who took everything they could get and kept it to themselves, even if they were not lacking. Dickens adapted this term for his character Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. I'm good. Three, two, one. True. It's fake. What? Scrooge is not a word. Are you kidding me? I use it all the time. <laughs> Scrooge. Oh, there's a font called Scrooge. There is? There is a font called Scrooge. Does it have dollar signs in it? Just like a pretty basic stampy looking font. Oh, I don't like that font at all. It reminds me of you guys. Oh. <laughs> Scrooge, Scrooge, Scrooge. Christmas carolers. Where did the caroler tradition come from, guys? Let's find out. Carols originated as part of pagan ceremonies for the winter solstice. They were sung as people dance around stone circles. It is not clear whether the word carol derives from the French carole or the Latin carula, meaning a circle dance. In any case, the dancing seems to have been abandoned quite entirely. It's Christmas, Carol! <laughs> <laughs> that should still be a real movie. <laughs> That's festive. Oh my god. Next one, wassail. From from Old Norse, vas hail. <laughs> from Old Norse, vas hail, meaning with hope. It was a celebratory phrase often said before consuming a frothy beverage made of malted wheat and plums. Like kind of saying frost or cheers, you would say vasail. Vasail, yeah. yeah. Three, two, one. It's fake. Silver bells. Copyright. 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 All right, go ahead. The ringing of bells goes back to pagan rituals. Bings. They rang bells to keep evil spirits away, and bells were among a part of many of their winter celebrations. Is that fast for faith? Three, two, one. Oh, I'm not ready. Oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. It's festive. What did you say? That's it, Vic. <laughs> gingerbread. What's the origin of gingerbread, guys? Credited to Queen Elizabeth I, who wanted to impress some visiting dignitaries. Is this tree lady that brought the tree into the No, that was Victoria. Victoria. Too many queens. I don't like trivia. <laughs> Good thing we're making this video again. Are we here? So she created a cookie in the image of each person. German immigrants to the US brought the tradition with them and many Americans have been practicing increasingly complex and record-breaking feats of confectionery engineering ever since. Festive or fake? Three, two, one. It's festive, you guys. Okay, yeah, that was festive. That's a real tradition. All right, let's tally the votes. They're not votes. 11 for Aaron, 11 <gasps> for Catherine, no, and no I way. don't have any tiebreaker. Never may win! You need to recount that. Uh, <laughs> 10, 11, it's a tie. Okay, great. That's okay, I'm fine with tiebreakers. 
with ties, I mean. Yeah, probably. We won together. You both won. Okay. Thank you, have a Merry Christmas, and a Happy Holiday, and we'll see you next year.